So I would next like to welcome Sebastian Brzezinski, who actually feel needs no introduction because he's been talked about so much before he's even arrived up here. Um, but he is going to give us a talk on the prevalence of lung lesions using thoracic ultrasonography in pre-weaned calves from dairy herds in Quebec. So thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to, to be here to present uh, uh, the results of that study we did uh, uh, last summer and, uh, and this winter. So I want to acknowledge uh, my collaborator, so Marie-Ève Boris, uh, who did part of the study during our internship, and Jocelyn Dubuc, uh, who is professor at the Heart Health uh, Medicine uh, Department. So basically, I want to talk to you about ultrasound today. <laughs> Uh, but uh, ultrasound uh, applied on a big problem we have in dairy calves, which is bovine respiratory disease complex. BRD, uh, I will use BRD abbreviation because it's easier, is one of the leading uh, causes of morbidity and mortality in, uh, in, cal in dairy calves uh, in North America and also in other parts of the world. There are multiple negative short and long-term impacts on not only on health, but also on productivity of the animals. The more a, a heifer is treated, or is be, uh, the longer she has been sick, the lower are the chance she will enter and she will be a productive animal. Uh, the big issue and the big challenge, at least in uh, small baby calves, is that enzootic pneumonia, and, uh, which is one of the key manifestations of BRD, is very tough to diagnose. Uh, clinical examination, there are several scoring tools, and uh, we use in a previous paper the uh, very common commonly used tool, which is the Wisconsin scoring uh, system. And uh, we applied it, and we uh, taking into account the fact that there is no gold standard to have a BRD diagnosis, and we see that the accuracy uh, sensitivity was close to 62%, and specificity 74%. So there is a, uh, there is a gap. We, we need to uh, feel to improve our accuracy to detect BRD. So among the different tools that we can use, there is ultrasound. So uh, Professor Koffler shows very nice videos of uh, what's happened uh, when, when you are calf side. I don't have videos, but it was great that he shows you the sliding movement of the pleura. The thoracic ultrasound is very useful, and what is nice is that it's very easy to decide if it's normal or abnormal. On the left part of the, of, the, of the slide, you have a normal ultrasonogram of the, where you can see the plural line, which is represented by the dotted line, and it's here that you would see the sliding uh, sign. And deeper, you cannot see the line because it's full of gas, so you only see reverberation artifacts. On the right part of the, of the slide, you see various examples of lung pathology. Most of time, at least in uh, small dairy calves, we have consolidation. So we don't have a large amount, uh, except sp some uh, specific cases. But most of time, what you will see is various amount of consolidation, which is manifested by the fact that you can see the liver parenchyma, which is very heterogenic, which have various aspects. On the left part, you will see consolidation, and on the right, uh, you will see abscesses. So what is interesting is that lung consolidation is, has also been linked with uh, production outcome. So uh, recently, using thoracic ultrasound at, at waning, shown that animals that were uh, that has at least one site with six centimeters or more of consolidation. So we use the depth of consolidation. Uh, we're at higher risk of being called before entering to the, uh, to the before calving. So it's nice to, uh, to, to we have a lot of, uh, uh, inform we, we have some information on that tool and it's, uh, so some studies are showing that it's, it can be associated with production outcome. But, and this is uh, very important to, to remember, when you do systematic ultrasonography in a bunch of calves, it's very important to remember that ultrasonography is giving you an idea of what's happened or has already happened in the lung. So just uh, take a moment to review the, this timeline. So you have a, an initial BRD uh, episode. So uh, the animal is sick, and depending on the herd, it will be a various component of virus, uh, bacteria, or both. Then you will have 
the clinical detection threshold, which can be the, the detection threshold by the producer, the farmer, or by the veterinarian. And what is interesting is that, or interesting or tricky, is that the clinical signs exhibited by the calf will, very, will be very variable and depend on a lot of characteristics, the etiology, uh, the, 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 the extension of the lesion, and other uh, predisposing factor of the calf. So there is a very tricky moment to pick that calf and to detect his, uh, this calf as sick. At the end of the day, or the week, or later, if the calf is treated or if it heals naturally, there will be, at the end, no active lesions, whether the lung is healing or chronic non-active lesions. And there is some gap between the presence of clinical signs and the initial insults and then parenchymal uh, disorder that can be assessed by ultrasound. We don't have extensive study uh, that mention the type of gap that exists. In experimental challenges with manemia hemolytica, lesions could appear as soon as two hours after the challenge, so it's very fast. But again, this is only one box in one experimental study, so it may vary. Then, after that gap, you will have lung lesions. And those lung lesions dynamic until now is not very known. What is important is that at the end, even if the animal is not sick or is healing, no active signs of inflammation, it will still have lung lesions, okay? So thoracic ultrasonography shows you that there are some BRD-associated lung lesions, whether they are active or not. You will need other confirming tests looking at the animal. Is he sick or not? If it's not sick, so uh, maybe you, you need to confirm that before putting in a antibacrobial, for example. So this was like just the background to, uh, to, for you to understand exactly the, the meaning of, of that study. So we screened a lot of calf. We've seen a couple of them that are consolidated. And we wanted to know what's happening the, at the herd level. Because again, when you want to put that tool uh, in the farm, you need to know what do I do with that tool. Okay, so the objective was to describe the herd prevalence of lung lesions using ultrasonography in pre rent dairy calves. So we, we chose zero, two months old dairy calves uh, from uh, our uh, uh, bovine ambulatory practice. So we, we used a, a sample site that was determined by uh, um, uh, consolidation, the prevalence that we anticipate to have to observe uh, during the low risk period in summer was 10%, plus minus 10%, so we had large range of possibility. <laughs> and for this, uh, 35 hertz should be enrolled, uh, and we, we finally include 39 hertz. So we selected the farms from the list of clients of the ambulatory sellers, so from a total of 161, uh, and the only uh, requirement was that when we check that list, we need to have six, at least six animals at the day of the visit because it was a cross-sectional study, so uh, we, we were there only once to get the idea of what's happened at that period in the herd. So six up to 12 herds uh, were enrolled. Most of time, I say randomly, when we had herds that had higher number of 12 her, uh, calves, but it was very uncommon since most of the herds have, at the day of visit, less than uh, 10 calves. So we, we took all the animals. So the sampling strategy we used, uh, so after we randomly selected the herd, we visit them first uh, during the summer 2015, and we uh, scan the calves, and we also uh, pass with the producer uh, questionnaire on the management of the, uh, of the animals. And we do also some calculation on the ventilation and uh, airborne bacteria, but uh, I won't talk about this uh, today because of time uh, restriction. We go back in the winter to know what's happened and if there was any change during the, 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 depending on the season. And again, we do the same thing and we record any management change uh, between the both period. So the protocol we used, so we use a linear probe uh, with a small Draminski eye scan scanner. 
And we, uh, to, to go fast, basically for a calf it takes, when you have experience, one, one minute to one and a half minute to scan the whole, both sides of the, of, the, of the thorax. So we directly sprayed alcohol and applied the, the, the probe to, to have a complete screening of the animals. So we defined two cutoffs. I've shown you earlier that the depth is, is, can be easily measured. And uh, we use one centimeter, so animal with one centimeter or more of consolidated lung were considered as consolidated. Uh, and we use also a more specific cutoff, again, because of uh, to link a cutoff with a production issue. Uh, Terry Olivet from Wisconsin has shown that three centimeter or more of consolidation happening during the pre-raining period has been associated with 50 gram per day uh, uh, loss of average daily gain during that period. So it's why we use those two uh, tools. Uh, so again, we use a screen square, so it's very fast to have an idea of a, a rough idea of extension of consolidation. And then you can easily have an idea if is it more three centimeter, one or five or more. And uh, this, the, the herd was the unit of interest of the study. Uh, we mainly uh, describe the population, so the, uh, mentioning the descriptive statistics with proportion of consolidated cows for both cutoffs, uh, median intracranial range, uh, and univariable analysis using mixed logistic regression model to assess uh, season effect and farm as a random effect. So, uh, the average uh, milking cows was 100. 50% of herds raised cows, uh, raised cows individually. 20% uh, used uh, automated milk fever. And the maximal volume of milk allowed was 8 liters, uh, the median. 82% uh, of herds used milk replacer and 28% uh, vaccinate uh, cows for BLD during pre running So uh, 39 herds, 60, uh, 607 cows. And what do we found? The prevalence of consolidation at one centimeter. So the median prevalence of the herd uh, was 17% 7, uh, from 8 to 42%. And during the winter, it rise to 50%, from 32 to 35%. So, and the odds of consolidation were greater in winter versus in summer. Using the more specific cutoff, the median prevalence was 8% from uh, 0 to 22% as an uh, intercartial range. And it rose in the, in the winter to 15% uh, uh, from 0 to 35%. And again, the season effect was significant. So it's just an observational study. We did not define what is the normal percentage of consolidation. But from our, uh, as practitioner, we, we always want to know and what do, I, what do I use even if I don't have any uh, specific uh, rec uh, recommendation? Maybe if you are in the upper quartile, so higher than the 75, 75th percentile, it could be considered as not normal, but we need definitely more studies on that. Uh, there was no previous data uh, on ultrasound at the herd level. And uh, it's very interesting to note that uh, Consolidation is not only observed uh, during the summer, which is considered as a high risk season, but also uh, during uh, uh, the summer. And again, remember, consolidation does not mean active lesion. So this is the next step of implementing the, the tool to know what do I do with a calf that is apparently normal and has lung lesions. So we, we are working on the uh, assessment of other characteristics we examined during the, the study. And the next step would be to know what is the impact of lung consolidation prevalence at the herd level on the performance of the effort, again, at the herd level versus at the individual level. So it can be, thoracic ultrasound is very easy to do in the form. And it's important to remember that uh, we commonly found lung lesions in, in dairy calves, at least in, in our practice, and the lesions are more frequent during the winter than in, in the summer. So I want to thank all the, the organisms that funded uh, that study. And uh, I'm ready for any question. Maybe Actually, time-wise, time um, <laughs> thanks very much. <laughs> So I think if anybody wants to ask questions, it will have to wait till after the next 
uh, come up talks because we're just running behind schedule. But um, it was a very interesting talk. Thank you very much.